The modern day college student is overworked and exhausted. They have the tough job of balancing schoolwork, jobs, social lives, and their health. To make matters worse, their diets are unpredictable, over-caffeinated, and heavy in sodium and empty calories. Oftentimes, they don't have time to eat, and when they do, they don't have many healthy options to choose from. Charlie Weir has worked at Cal Poly's campus market for over five years and understands how tough it is for students to eat right. Uh, with the growing demand of hours that you need to spend on projects, also a lot of students work a lot, there's just not enough time in their day for them to make meal, make, have breakfast every morning at home, to make a lunch to go, to go home and make a dinner, and you know, to eat healthily. Students are not getting enough fruits and vegetables and are skipping breakfast. This leads to poor food choices later in the day. Dr. Ann McDermott, Associate Professor of Kinesiology and Director of Stride at Cal Poly, explains how important it is to keep blood sugar levels steady throughout the day. Blood sugar is what your brain needs to think. Uh, it'll, it'll affect how you study in your class, how, uh, how um, with, with it you are in your class, how able you are to follow your lecture and, and be with the moment. Dr. McDermott helps oversee student-based research at Cal Poly. The FLASH studies look at the eating, exercise, and study habits of students over the span of four quarters, from the spring of 2008 to spring 2009. These studies discovered that a shocking 5% of females and 2% of males are getting the recommended five to eight servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Alcohol also plays a large role in the average student's lifestyle. Alcohol has zero nutritional value and is a classic example of what nutritionists call empty calories. According to the FLASH study, at their last social event, two-thirds of the guys took part in binge drinking, while one-third of the girls drank five or more beverages. Then what happens when you get blitzed and you're drinking your five drinks? Now your inhibitions go down, and so now you get the munchies, and so now you start eating anything that's in front of you or craving junk foods and all fatty foods. So usually the binge drinking part goes along with over-consuming junk. Rumor has it, the Taco Bell on the corner of Santa Rosa and Olive Street is the second largest grossing Taco Bell in the nation, drawing huge crowds during its late night hours. According to the New York Times, studies have shown that proximity to fast food leads to an increase in obesity among students. Well, we live in a fast food market on campus here. Every place around here is an opportunity for versions of fast food. Cal Poly offers more healthy items every year, but the truth is that fatty, prepackaged foods are cheaper and easier to keep in stock. It's not very cost effective to offer a lot of healthy options because it's a lot cheaper to just buy prepackaged things. The modern day college student faces new challenges that weren't present in past decades. Students have a new dependence on caffeinated beverages, making coffee and energy drinks part of their daily routine. Charlie Weir admits that the market plays into the caffeine phenomenon. Sadly, we uh, push those pretty hard. We have the little five-hour energy bottles at every register, and we have a fully stocked energy drink cabinet, and I use them all the time, too. Beverages that are high in caffeine can lead to surges in blood pressure, energy crashes, excessive calorie intake, and dehydration. Students are lining up at the new Starbucks on campus every day to get their favorite caffeine fix. I buy coffee every day. So I'm like, I'm the problem is that the lattes, frappuccinos, mochas, and cappuccinos are high in sugar, calories, and they don't fill you up. This generation of college students have also developed a reliance on processed foods. They count on pre-made, pre-packaged foods that have dangerously high levels of sodium and preservatives. So one of the things is by so much reliance on processed foods, we don't know what's in your food. Over the past few years, Cal Poly has made a sincere effort to provide healthier options for students. They've improved their options for like fresh food, hot food, salad bar, we just got a new one, which has a lot more options. Some students are doing a good job of picking foods that are good for you and don't break the bank. Uh, I try not to buy food on campus because it's, you know, overpricedness. But uh, the salad bar is cool. I like that. I took advantage of the 14 uh, uh, cents per ounce deal when they had that going on.
Two more issues students are faced with when buying food on campus are product placement and exaggerated portion sizes. When you're checking out of the ca uh, cafeteria, what is in the line while you're at your checkout? Not just Rice Krispie Treats, the most humongous, inappropriate portion sized Rice Krispie Treats dipped in chocolate. We're promoting inappropriate portion sizing. We know from research that the assumption by the individual is that's the appropriate size. In the end, students need to put more thought into their diet and get informed. Uh, knowledge is power, and so people need to have some baseline information about how much food should I eat, why should I eat those particular things, and then how do I, how do I learn to make choices so I have variety in my diet, the things taste beautiful.